Hello and welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to be looking at a concept called A-lists. Now we've used con cells a lot already. We've got other videos on it. Um, they are a little compound object which holds two things. So we can say cons one and two and we get an object back that's holding one and two. We call this left hand side here the car and the right hand side the cuda. So the cuda of this is is two and the car of this is one. Um, you can see that the representation is in this dotted pair notation. We can also write that ourselves. So if we go 3.4, we get a new con cell. Uh, but that is still technically equivalent of calling cons with three and four. We're just producing a new con cell here. Now, we do a lot of things with con cells. We chain them together linearly, linearly, linearly to make lists. Um, we nest them to make trees and we do a variety of things with them. One other thing we could represent with con cells is some kind of associative mapping thing like, like hash tables are. We have a key and we uh, have a value in this structure and we want to be able to get things out based on their key. So give me the key A, I'm gonna give you the result that was associated with it. So let's have a look at how to do that with consoles. There's actually a variety of ways of doing it, but one very popular way is something called an A-list. So I've got one of those up here and you'll notice that it's very simple. It's just a list of consoles, whether the car, the left-hand side is the key and the value or datum is on the right-hand side in the CUDA. So then we can use a function called ASUC and you just pass in the, how you want to access. So I want to get the value associated with A from A list, what it actually returns is the entire con cell. So it returns the con cell that starts with A. So if we just want the, the uh, CUDA here, the value associated with A, then we can do CUDA and we can get one. Let's do that again. Um, let's do the whole thing again, actually. Let's do, if we look up B, we can see that we get this con cell here with B and two. Um, but by sticking a CUDA on the front, we just get two. So what we could do here is make ourselves a little helper function. So we'll just call it Asuka. Um, we'll take a key and an A list, and then we're just going to call CUDA on Asuk of key and A list. Of course, you could expand this to include all the things that Asuk actually supports. You can see down here that it has a key test and other things going on here. So we'll get back to that soon. But now this means that we could take our A list. We can say Asuka A and we can get one, Asuka, B, we get two. So that kind of gives us the API we'd expect from things, other associative structures like hash tables. Now, all well and good, but we need to add things to these A-lists as well. So we are going to use something called A-cons. As you might guess from the name, it adds something. It cons is something to the front of this list, and it's gonna cons another pair, another con cell. So we have here, we pass in a key, um, which in this case, let's make it something new. We're going to pass in C and three is going to be the datum. And this is the A list that we're adding to. So if we call test now, you can see we get a new list back. Hooray. So we have our A and B already in there and our C, our con cell containing C and three. That's brilliant. So if we were going to ASIC um, C out of this, remember the star in the REPL refers to the last result. Um, then we can get C3 out of it. Brilliant. One thing to note though, let's just go back to our A list zero. It is unchanged. ACONS does not mutate the original um, data, which is great. But if we do want to apply this back into this variable, we're going to have to add a set. So let's just, for the sake of our little example here, set is now going, sorry, test is now going to set the new value back to A list afterwards. So we have our original A list. We're going to call test. And then we check our A-list again and we can see that that's been modified, which is great. And that means then we can do Asuka, whoops, on A-list zero, passing in some key. Let's pass in B, we get two, pass in C, we get three, pass in A, we get one. Cool. Now, what happens if I add A again with a new value? Run test. That's interesting. So notice that the new thing has been appended cons to the front of this list, cons to the front of the A list, but now we have two values potentially for A. Which one is ASIC going to pick? Let's try it out. ASIC of A 
of a list gives us a 10. So we can see how ASIC works. It walks from left to right in the list, it walks down the chain of consoles, and it looks at the first element. And if it's a match, then it's going to return that console. So if you add new things, it's not going to remove them from earlier in the list, but it is going to put them in front, which means they will be the one that's picked. There's some uses for this that you can come up with. You might want to pop these things off again, but I'm not going to dive into that. I just want to point out that this is the behavior. So we've had a quick look at ASIC. We've had a quick look at ACONS, and I think that's a good place to stop the video. So I'll see you in another little bit of Lisp.